I think one thing that I've enjoyed about cooking Mexican food is that Mexican cooking to me is more like guidelines on techniques. The only thing that's true is what the last person told you. So this is gonna be my guideline to making my tamales, which is one of my favorite things to eat in the holidays. Hi, I'm Fermi Nunez from Suerte in Austin, Texas, and today we're gonna be making tamales. We have to start making the base on where we're gonna cook, braise the pork. All right, so the first step to working with his chilies is we're gonna take the tops off and then we're gonna remove some of the seeds. While we're doing that, I'm also gonna be start uh, to heating up some chicken stock, which we're gonna use to rehydrate the chiles. This is uh, guajillo. This one's gonna be mostly for a little bit of color and sweetness. This one's gonna be our arbol, which is where most of our heat's gonna come from. And then this is our chile piquín, which will be the spicy note to it. Stock, right now it's at a simmer. I'm just literally gonna pour this over the chiles and then just let them hang out. So now we're gonna take the rest of our vegetables. We're gonna take an onion and choppy choppy. Tamales to me are one of those things that I always enjoyed growing up eating because it always reminded me of the holidays. The ones that we're making today are more of the northern part of Mexico tamales because we use corn husk as opposed to banana uh, leaves, which you will find in some other parts of the south of Mexico. Uh, these ones, they usually have a little bit less filling than the ones that have banana leaves. To me, epazote is the herb that makes beans delicious. And I like to use it in this braise, chop it in here. I'm also gonna take avocado leaves. If you can't find this, stop, go find it, because this is the money maker. So now we're gonna take all these things, put them in the blender. Just like in the movies. All the garlic, I'm gonna jump this liquid in here to give the blender a head start with the vinegar. And we're gonna go broom, broom. It's just like a blender. I'm gonna drop it in here. You're gonna feel like it's a little loose, but don't be afraid. Close your eyes and open your heart and listen to me because we're gonna take a little bit of that liquid and use it for the masa that we're gonna make the tamales with. So now we have the liquid ready, we have the pork, we're just literally gonna chop this up so we can salt it. Not all tamales are created equal. Think of it as like, as a vessel to carry and wrap all the delicious things that you want to eat inside. It's like the most satisfying to eat after a night of drinking. In this process, I'm not removing any of the fat because fat is gonna bring a lot of flavor. Now we're gonna salt. Be a little bit generous with your salt. But one of the things you wanna keep in mind when like you're making this is you don't wanna over salt it because it's gonna cook for a minute, right? So all those flavors are gonna reduce. So if you like season it to the limit right now, the end result is gonna be too salty and your mom is not gonna be happy. The pan is on medium heat. I'm gonna add enough oil to cover, just like a chef. I'm gonna start searing. We're not gonna overcrowd our pan because we're professionals, because then you won't get maximum sear. Searing right now on the pork is gonna allow us to have a lot of depth of flavor in the tamales. So now I'm just taking some of the pork out, and by some I mean all of it that I've seared. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's still gonna brace in the bracing liquid. I'm not gonna scrape the pan, I want all that flavor to be in the tamales so it ends up in your belly. All right, so we're very close. Most of the meat is already been seared. We're just finishing off these pieces to get some nice color on them. Now I'm gonna start adding the rest of this meat back in the pot. This is the bracing liquid. Perfect amount of liquid to meat ratio. Bring it to a simmer. So now we're gonna put the lid on this. The pork is almost done cooking. Right now I'm gonna start soaking the corn husks. Just warm water. Uh, you can boil some water, let it rest, and then drop the husks in there. So you use a little plate to kind of weigh it down. And the beautiful thing about this is that you cannot soak them for too long. So just kind of make sure they're covered in water and then forget about it. We're gonna use all the liquid that had all the, the fat rice to the top, use it for the masa. Pork is super tender, kind of just falls apart with a fork. Mmm, I'm gonna add more salt. This is this is like where you have to add the salt because once it's in the tamal, you can add salt inside of the tamal. Take the meat out, put it in a bowl. Literally that pork is already gonna like shred. And now we smash. We're just gonna like, we've all had pulled pork in our lives. Think of like that pulled pork texture. If you have like fatty pieces like that, don't be afraid of it, just smash it. 
and all that is gonna turn into just flavor bombs of like deliciousness, fatty clouds inside of your tamal. I'm gonna set this pork aside and I'm gonna start making the masa for the tamales. Masa is the canvas of Mexican cooking. With masa, you can make tortillas, la yudas, la collos, tostadas, and tamales. There's all kinds of masas out there in the world. Some are better than others. I encourage you to go to your local molino. If you can't go that route, there is masa powders. Masa powders are not evil. The evil ones are the cheap ones. You know, you're gonna be thinking, Fermin, why is this different than what you have in this video? The reason is because this has been dried and turned into a powder. If you are wondering how much liquid to add, just start with the recipe that is in the bag. Make sure that it is not so wet to where it sticks in your hands. We need to add a little bit of fat. We need to add a little bit of liquid. Allow that masa to not be dry. So we're gonna add a little bit of lard. Make sure the lard is room temperature or even a little bit cold. Add a little bit of salt. We're gonna pull this down and then we're gonna nice. we're gonna fluff it up. Think of it like fluffy marshmallows when you're making this. Let it go for about 45 seconds to a minute. So this wasn't getting to the bottom of the bowl. So we called in some friends. Now we're gonna fluff. Woo! And now we're there. It's crazy that to me this is like so unusual. But for most people, this is like the standard of whipping things. Now that my lard has been fluffed, I'm gonna start adding the liquid that we saved from the pork. I'm just gonna slowly start to stream it in. It's important that the liquid is not hot. Room temperature or cold is fine because if we just add hot liquid to the fluff lard, it's just gonna kind of bring it down. I should have stuck with a hand mixer. We call in for help. This might get messy, but it's fine. That's the fun of tamales. <laughs> this is fucking awesome. <laughs> We're incorporating the liquid into the lard. This is how you make tamales. All right, so our lard and brazen liquid has been incorporated. We're gonna have to figure out a way to put this in here without making so much mess. I was trying to be so clean and you guys saw that all fucking shoot. So actually, yeah, you've been so clean and like really actually classy. All right, so now that uh, we made a mess, we're gonna take it back to the mixer. The masa, we're gonna add to this mixer one little chunk at a time. Now that everything is incorporated, it looks kind of like just a very homogenous Mixer, if you've made tortillas in the past, this might feel really loose, but actually that's like the right amount of looseness that you want. Because again, we're gonna we're still gonna cook this dough for like 45 minutes to an hour. So think about that when you're making tamales. I'm gonna let it chill for a little bit. So when we come back, we're just gonna assemble everything and have a party of tamal making before we steam them and we finally eat them. We're gonna make an assembly line. The hearts first, then the masa, and then our shredded pork. Whatever you have on your munchies, kusi, this is the time to open it, take a sip, and go to town, okay? Try to get the husks that are gonna be bigger in sizes, and they're gonna curve, you know, towards you. Belly to belly, that's how I think about it all the time. We're gonna take our left hand and put it at the bottom. A little bit of this masa, and we're pretty much just gonna cover from this part to a bite here, leaving about, you know, two inches of space. Once you commit to this, it's hard to uncommit. We're gonna just spread lightly. So that is what you want it to look like. After this, you're gonna take a little bit of your pork filling. Be generous with it, but not too generous to where you can't close it. We're gonna close it, this side, going inside. This one comes over and namaste. Taking the bottom of the pointy part, pulling it to the top, and that's your first tamal. One trick to keep it close is, you're gonna take some of the leaves, the husks, that are really small to make a tamal. You're gonna make your ribbon, that you're gonna wrap it. You take this tamal, and we're gonna wrap it, just like in the movies. 
Tamales are kind of intense to make. So it's one of those things that you do for the holidays because when your tias are visiting from wherever they're coming from, it's like a fun time to celebrate and hang out with each other. If you get a little bit in your hand, it's fine. You're making food. This is also another great fun part to like get the kids, wrap. Think of it like putting the blanket over your tamal. That's how you do it. Make sure that when you're pinching it from the bottom, you don't have matzah trapped in here. Then we wrap it. Just like a little treat for your future self. If a little bit comes out, that's fine. You can do the good old fashioned trick of doing that. All right, so now our water is simmering. We're creating some steam in this pot. When you're putting them in there, you wanna make sure they stand up. The masa is really loose. If you put them laying flat, the masa is just gonna kind of like go down and into the water and you're gonna have a really weird tamal soup. I'm gonna put the lid on these guys. Let them stir for 45 minutes. Tamales need to rest. They've been cooking for a while. They've been steaming. They've been sweating for 45 minutes, maybe an hour. They have to rest. The mistake that a lot of people make usually is they keep cooking them because they keep checking them when they're still steaming them and they end up overcooking them. You have to let your tamales rest. They're ready because the husk is not sticking to the masa, right? So now let's eat one. I'm gonna unwrap it like a little present. And this tamale is just waiting for me. You can serve this with salsa, pico de gallo, whatever it is that you wanna like dip in. But right now to me, like this is gonna be the money. Mmm. The masa, it's part of the star here. The texture is very good. It's not dried. It's not too fatty. It's like the right amount of fluffiness. Um, the pork is shredded. It's delicious. Has a little bit of that vinegar kick. You're done eating one. I can't wait to eat the next one. For the recipe, click on the link below. If you're ever in Austin, come to Suerte, visit me. Make these tamales. Tell me how to turn out of the restaurant. Or just come and have tortillas at Suerte. You won't regret it. The first times where I was like line cooking and just like prepping and stuff, sometimes I would be like spending all day with chiles and I was like, I'm Mexican, I don't need to wear gloves. This is my country and I'm gonna use the chiles. And sometimes I would forget that I was dealing with chiles all day and I would go to the restroom. And that was not fun. So after making that mistakes a few times, I kind of realized that you should wash your hands. <laughs>